Well, hi, I'm Dr. Tom Ulrich, and I like to talk about leadership and engineering. Hey, today I want to talk a little briefly about how conflict uh, erupts. I think there's another video where I talked about kind of the nature of conflict. This one is just how, how often it starts. And, and these ideas come from, there's a body of literature called group dynamic theory. So it's been a lot of research, a lot of people looking at how conflict in a group starts. And one of the most common ways uh, is, is um, very simple, simple to understand. And you'll see it once I explain it. You see it in the workplace all the time. And for this kind of conflict, what happens is, let's say, a, a typical engineering thing, you know, so let's talk about software testing, for example, you know, you've got two contradictory ideas. You've got the idea that you need to do an excellent job testing, and of course, that, you know, kind of, that idea pushes you toward, we need to test more. You've also got this idea that, look, we're a business, we need to to be profitable, we need to, to make our deadlines and so on, and that pushes you toward testing less because testing is expensive, testing takes calendar, if you want to get it soon or if you want to get it sooner or you want to get it done at less cost, you have to test less. So, so you see how we have this built-in struggle, and that's just the nature of engineering, right? You always have these trade-offs. So uh, in a discussion, the way conflict often arises is that idea will be discussed, you know, someone will say, well, you know, we need, we need, find, need to find a way to um, cut costs of testing. And what will happen then is one person will pick either side. Let's say, you know, no, we can't compromise on testing. And they will just latch onto that and, and, and see it one-sided. The only thing to consider is that we have, to, we have to test more. We have to, you know, not compromise on safety. What that does from a group dynamics perspective is that immediately forces everybody to make a choice. Am I with this person or without? And see, and that's the, the true beginning of conflict is now as the person doing that, you've now put out a, hey, are you with me or against me? And so there'll be some people who are like, who won't want to be against you and now they're on your side. There's other people seeing that, hey, listen, there's, a, there's another side to be considered. And they'll sort of like, well, for the sake of the company, i got to stand up for that. And all of a sudden, you have an absolutely polarized group. And then all of a sudden, it becomes an identity issue where I'm one of the ones who thinks that, you know, pick either side. And you, you see how that works is when you, when you stubbornly, when there's, there's two choices that we have to hold in dynamic tension, and when you say, I'm only going to think about this one, then you've polarized the group. And the only way to avoid this, the only way to avoid being the kind of person that polarizes a group, I mean, if you do this sort of thing, we can accurately describe you as a polarizer, as a conflict creator, as all these things, is you have to keep coming back to this is dynamic tension. Everybody involved needs to recognize that there are two things held in tension, and we, we we're not going to find an acceptable solution till both people... Um, you know, sort of, sort of buy into the fact that both these things need to be addressed. And, uh, you know, you may see yourself as a, a crusader. You may see yourself as, you know, the only person with a conscience. I mean, you may, you, you, you more than likely tell yourself any number of stories, but let me tell you the story everybody else is telling. They're saying you create conflict, you're a troublemaker, you're contrary. And so, you know, that's the, the scariest part about this is, you know, we tell ourselves while we're doing this that, you know, we're the one voice of, of this or that. And the reality is you're just the troublemaker. And at any rate, that's, it can be a tough pill to swallow. But until you make a commitment to not polarize the group by latching on to only one of two things or one of more than two things held in tension, the, the truth is you're, you're a troublemaker. At any rate, uh, I'm Dr. Tom Ulrich. That's a little bit about how conflict creates. As always, I like to talk about leadership and engineering. And if you'd like to hear more videos, there's a bunch at TomUlrichConsulting.com, and we'll talk to you later.